Pittman with the kick. Everyone covered in mud, blood, sweat and tears. Blood and the ref yeah. puts the whistle to his mouth. And it's a huge victory. Make no mistake, you could have just witnessed history here. 2-1 to hashtag 10 games left in the league. But he is now in our control. The coronavirus I must give the, the British UK. people a very simple instruction. War of the world you must stay at home. Let's cancel or postpone. Well, maybe we should take it back a little bit further than that. In the UK, all forms of football have been suspended. Well, it's obvious to say, but lockdown was was tough for us all. There was so much uncertainty. I guess at the start, it was pretty hard to adapt. It was probably the first time I ever encountered like a bit of a breakdown, really. Content's a massive part of what we do, and we're going to keep bringing you as much as we physically can across all our YouTube channels and social media. Just got the news that um... Our league and all the other leagues at our step, non-league, have been, uh, I believe the word is, expunged. Once we got over the fact that the season had been binned, we didn't really know where to go. We still wanted to create as much content as we can. We were having to adapt our content. We found we kept trying and trying and trying new ideas. I tried pretty much every trick in the book. And for a period of time, it was really tough because the audience didn't really want to know. People just wanted to see football. Like, you can't blame them, it's what we're known for. It's probably what we're best known for. So, yeah, that was a little bit challenging. We're bringing a women's team into the Hashtag United family. Even though lockdown was incredibly tough and busy, it brought out some great benefits. So we managed to complete the merger with AFC Basildon. So we've now got a women's team. And now we have a team sitting in the fourth tier of the women's football pyramid, which is only three promotions away from the women's super league. We've also got the youth merger, so we've got a whole youth team set up. Hashtag go from having one football team to over 40. At a time in which the, there was so much uncertainty of what was going to happen, we were probably doing some of the biggest building that we've ever done in Hashtag's existence. We're doing like pre-season before pre-season. We've been out now, what, two, three months? I can't lie, like getting back into small training sessions was a very good feeling, like whether it was just groups meeting up to play or even like sessions being held on Zoom. Like, knowing football that could be on its way back was great, but I think the best thing was that at Hashtag, we could get back to doing what we do best, which is making content. Marcus stamped the diamond in the rough. We found him on the streets of Rio de Janeiro. Just know that I'm here and I'm on time. We found him in the Hashtag Academy series as a very, very good footballer, but for me, he's someone that's transitioned beyond that within Hashtag to actually be a vital part of the staff team. Spencer, to me, is the best manager alive. With Stampy, it's the same with it's football or not football. You just let him, let him flourish and do his own thing and just don't tell him what to do too much. I've seen him do it on the virtual pitch with FIFA and Football Manager. I've seen him do it on the real life pitch at Wembley and all over the world. And now he's the chairman of his own club. And the mad thing is that he's only just getting started. I started filming the documentary today, Dad. Come on in, <laughs> Joey, it's dog. As you can see, Joey is very excited for to return into tr to training today. Joey, in the garden, mate, come on. You little nutter. See ya. Oh, the other door's open, so he'll be back. Turning to training today. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not getting too excited because even though today's the first day that everyone's getting back together, 
We still don't know when we're playing our first game. I'm not sure what's better for the documentary here. Should I score a screamer and you go like, oh, Spen's actually decent at football, what a legend. Or I miss it and then you actually realise why it is I'm not training today and why I don't play in the team. So what I'll do is I'll try and score. If it misses, I'll pretend I, I missed on purpose. <clears throat> here we go. It's just an example of uh, what's in the locker in case Devs is watching. I mean, that was neither. That was just average. Oh, I'd rather fail stupendously than uh, do that. Let's have another go. More realistic. That's probably more true to how they usually go. You've got to try and recreate the match situation, though, you see. That's what Joey helps with. He's like a defender. Yeah, it's been challenging off the pitch, probably more than we thought it was going to be because, well, we were working on a massive investment deal for the last few years that um, took up a lot of time, mainly my brother Seb's time. He works on that sort of thing. And because of the pandemic, that, that went away. Seb, my brother, you know, the person I've known the longest since I was born uh, with regards to this club. The thing that's really kept this club going and growing are the partnerships we've been able to create with brands and sponsors and Seb is at the heart of every single one of those deals. We wouldn't work in the way we do without Seb. Working with family is one of the blessings they have a hashtag. You know, everyone is involved or at some point has been very much a massive part of the club. Obviously it has its challenges as well. Me and Spencer, I think we're incredibly similar. People say on the commentary all the time just how much we sound alike. And sometimes if you close your eyes, you can't tell who's who. People say I sound like him. He needs to remember, I'm older, he sounds like me technically very true. I actually don't think we sound alike. However, we're also very, very different. I think most of the time, although we do clash from time to time, most of the time, those differences really, really complement each other. If I'm the heart of the club, he's the brains of the club. So we need to be together at all times or else we're going to die. Right, we're on the way to Barley Lands uh, in Billericay, which is where Forest Glade is based. Forest Glade being the youth club that we've done our merger with over the summer. See the boys start what's hopefully not going to be a super long pre-season. This isn't like professional football where these players are just going to be training every day at home, you know, and they're going to have all the gym equipment they need and they're going to do whatever. These players would have been working or they would have been maybe furloughed, I don't know. It's all up to their own motivation. Honestly, semi-professional football, non-league, whatever you want to call it, it's the hardest level of football, in my opinion, because you've got to balance it with a job, with real life. Hopefully the boys haven't been, <laughs> you know, I've put on a bit of weight. I've grown, I've doubled the length of my hair and I've doubled the length of my waist <laughs> over uh, lockdown. So hopefully the footballers haven't done the same. Welcome back. It's been, um, it's been a long wait for us, isn't it? Long, long wait. So we need to work hard from the start. Sooner rather than later, we need to be up to speed because we don't know when it's going to get dropped on us. There's all kinds of rumours about when we can start playing, etc., etc. Us, this season. My belief, our belief, is that we have the best squad in the league. Any additions we have will only make us better. I intend to go into the league season with the best group of players. All I want from you when you're here is absolute dedication and bundles of enthusiasm. Any questions? Come on, let's go, right. enjoy. We've With Joe, to start. I first met Devs, uh, I think it was back in 2013. I was the assistant manager at a club called East Thurrock United. Steve, Stevie CB, Spencer's dad, was our physio. And he had his, uh, his son who he asked if he could come in and start a bit of a, a, a documentary and follow us for the season, I think. Despite East Thurrock still being in need of a few additions to the squad, they were able to secure another decent 2-0 win. I'm hoping this is going to be a lot better, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I kept in contact with Devs, and uh, when we needed a manager to go into non-league, he was the first person I asked, in fact, the only person I asked. I've been in, in and around non-league football since I left school, basically. Started out at, at the top level of non-league football. I think I've played at every, every level in the non-league pyramid, including the league that we're in now, and then have managed or coached in every step apart from the, you know, the National League. It was a substantial drop for him to come down to what was the level below where we are now when he first took over. Obviously guided us to the title and promotion and maybe would have done that last year as well if it wasn't for the COVID situation. It seemed like a knee-jerk instant reaction to null and void our season. For me and I think for Devs it's given us a 
uh, doubled sense of motivation to go again this year and really just finish what I think we would have done last year. We can only really look forward and think that's something we try to apply um, across the club at moving forward and, and, and building and improving and being better and that's on the pitch as a first team, that's off the pitch as a club, uh, whether it be the youth set up or the, or the, or the women's set up. It's about us growing now and we're not going to let anything stop us from trying to do that or you know, detract away from, from our, our intentions to grow and become established as a, as a football club. Chop chop boys, come on. <laughs> It's brilliant. This one's nice and light. This is an exciting day for us because a couple of weeks ago I made a big order of Adidas. We need to kit out all our women's team with Adidas gear and our managers, our coaches, but also excitingly in these boxes we have got our new home kit, which um, is going to be revealed very, very soon to our audience. So this is the first time we're seeing it, isn't it? It's all badged up. It's all badged up. Oh, Got the sponsor. Da 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 da. Decent. Yeah. Do you want to actually open one up? Yeah, we can open one up. Have a look. Let's open a medium up. This is going to be not only be giving out to our players to wear, but this is also going to be going on our website. So we need to go through it check what they've sent us, what we've ordered, and um, put it up on our website and start selling to all our lovely fans. Obviously, Alex is my partner, and our kind of history goes back way beyond hashtag United. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but with regards to this club, she's actually much more important to this club than probably people realise. She does a lot behind the scenes. Uh, the things that make this club keep ticking, a lot of them are associated with Alex. Working with a partner comes with its challenges. Spencer has incredibly high standards, high attention to detail, and he always pushes you to be the best that you can be. And that's what I would say about Spencer, is that I've definitely grown as a person, as an editor. He's taught, he's taught me everything that I know. I have actually got the shorts and socks if you wanted Imagine to put a full kit on. Oh, scores I got. Bam! It's close as I'm gonna get to. Huh. <laughs> They're more like, chasing someone, come back. Right. I like it. Also, I'm really excited to get the women in their hashtag gear. Really make them feel part of the club. Um, they're still using their, their own stuff at the moment, but they're going to feel like they're, they're now part of the team, which is so important. Exciting day at training. New kit day. This is a long overdue drop off day of lots of training gear and bags, obviously, for the women's team. They've obviously been training for a bit already, but we haven't been able to kit them out in their proper hashtag stuff yet, which starts today, so very exciting. Get your kit. It's not first come, first serve, don't worry, you'll be all right. So, you know, your name's on the Great day, great day. Alex is doing all the hard work as well, so I just get to sit back and relax. Me and the girls getting the kit today has been brilliant because we've We've all got the same kit now, we're looking nice and smart. Um, it feels like all together now, because obviously the announcement was made like um, what, a couple of months ago. Um, so now we feel really part of the family. We're training hard, getting ready for the season when it starts. So yeah, really enjoying it. Well, I'm not jumping into the next game. I'm staying on stream, but we're going to start refreshing now. Hopefully we find out. Uh, who we've got in the draw. Put in the chat where you think FA Cup, are where we're going to finish in FA Cup this year. Give you a consideration. First, we're starting at the very beginning. It's called the extra preliminary round. Then you've got the preliminary round. Then you've got the first qualifying round. Second qualifying round. Third qualifying round. Fourth qualifying round. Six qualifying rounds of games before you play the first round proper. The first round proper is where league professional football clubs come in. Third round Premier League clubs. So to get to the third round and play a Premier League teams, you're talking about winning eight games. And of those eight, probably we'd be the underdog for, I would say, seven of them. Oh, it's done. It's done. Right. They're ready. The draw is out. There it is. Park view away. Park view away, boys. You see it? Get it. Away games. Park view away, number 83. Well, I saw Park view. It's their first, it's their first FA Cup as well. I saw that earlier. Let me tell you something about Park view because I can, uh, I can tell you. 
No, they, they play at New River. They play at New River? <laughs> no <laughs> way! No, I'm that is where we played like the first 30, 40 home <laughs> games. Written, written the what song. are the chances of that? New River is the original hashtag arena. Chapter one. That's where they play. Hey, it's chapter one away. That's a joke. Okay, step below us, that's, that's a good draw. We could have had a team, team in the in step above us, but we can also find out who we're playing if we win. There you go. Oh, Felix right. Stowe Wal and Walton United. They're, they're league above us. So we're playing the game. Yeah, same place we played Palmers. We've had a lot of big games there. Play them. Hopefully beat Parkview. Felix Stowe at home. Decent. We are not, and I won't tolerate, I won't have it, right? We've, we're 4-2 down, right? And I don't care whether it was 2-0 while you were on the pitch, right? but at 4-2 down, we're fucking getting in and dicking around and getting into little chirpy rows, and I can hear it, like you're in the fucking, having little fucking street rows. Right, I can hear you, and I can hear you getting involved with it, and you've b both been me, but especially you, been really long enough. I don't fucking have that. You take it on the chin when you've not been good enough, and you win with style and class when you have been good enough. You never ever, and I don't care if they're being trying to drag you down to a level. You rise above it and be better than it, because that was disgusting, and I will not tolerate it. There's so much work to be done. And it's not just that you're in your feet, there's a lot of work to be done there. I'm starting to worry about some, you just think it's a little, a, a little ride and it's all gonna be, it's not gonna be easy. It is not easy playing for this football club because everyone wants to shoot you down. You get one before the game, they're gonna treat it. That's what we get. We have to take these games on for a reason. We go, even you go to higher place opposition, higher leagues, they want to embarrass you. They want to embarrass you. They want to mess up th their jobs, because it's so different. And tonight, you've got sucked right in. Sucked right in. A lot of thinking to be done after tonight, for, 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 for everyone, I'd suggest. A lot, of, a lot of thinking, a lot of reflecting to do. I will put Saturday's squad up tomorrow. Um, and then on Monday in training, there will be some conversations, okay? So strictly speaking, driving a van isn't in my job description. I run the media and operations. That really means I'm responsible for all the video and all the content and the program and everything really that you see that goes out on hashtag channels. Um, it doesn't mean I make it all, I have to say that. But then because it's such a small team, um, I help run the operations as well. And that's kind of a vague term. I, I can't remember the things I've had to do over the last couple of years. What can I say about Neil? One of the hardest working men in not just football, but maybe in the world. I love Neil. Spen's now my boss. 10 years ago, I think he used to be his boss. So I launched Copper 90. Uh, about 10 years ago, and he was my social media manager. Neil will get his hands stuck in in jobs that are way beneath you know, his job description when necessary, which is, I wish he didn't have to, but we're a small club and he acknowledges that and he'll do anything he can to help this club grow. There's a lot I could say about Spen, um, but keeping it concise, massive amount of respect for him, number one. Otherwise, I don't think I'd be here working for him. He'll have really ambitious, sometimes crazy sounding ideas, which I've got to try and turn into reality. And to be fair to him, most of the time he's absolutely spot on. And, and he reminds me of my old boss at Sky, uh, Tim Lovejoy. Both of them are pushing the boundaries. My career would have been a lot poorer if they hadn't been part of it. So today we are moving our gear from Tilbury, our old home, to Bowers new home. Um, it's only about 20 minutes from the HQ to Tilbury and Tilbury to Bowers and what have you. Um, but someone's got to do it, right? It's sad to be leaving. This is kind of us officially leaving. 
and clearing out. They were fantastic uh, landlords. So we sad to leave, but there was a business opportunity to move to Bowers and run an education course from there, which obviously frustratingly now isn't happening this year because of uh, COVID. But we'd obviously already made that agreement with Bowers. So um, yeah, Bowers again, is fantastic, but it's a shame to leave Tilbury. Home, old home. Hello Tilbury, I haven't seen this place since that night against Walthamstow. One all. Let's hope they haven't changed the locks. Hey, we're in, we're in. Let's go. Uh, I've got... <laughs> now the awkward thing is remembering what's ours and what isn't. <laughs> Ow, shit. I'm sure if I was at Manchester United, they'd have someone else to do this, but needs must, eh? <laughs> this is trickier. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> really liked playing at Tilbury, uh, but onwards and upwards. So we're hoping this season, moving to Basildon, Bowers, that we can really try and grow that local audience because we know we've got a global fan base, but every football club really needs a, a good local fan base. The thing is, it's really hard around here. There are so many good non-league football clubs. Tilbury, East Thurrock, Romford just down the road, uh, Brentwood, Basildon, uh, Bowers themselves, South End Football League Club up the road, Colchester not a long way away. There's a lot of clubs around here. So building that local fan base is gonna be quite difficult, but we like challenge, right? So we're gonna go to the end of this road, a quick right, then a left, where you see those towers, that's basically the ground. Well, leaving Tilbury was, was bittersweet, to be honest, because whilst I'm very happy about where we're going to, we had some great times at Tilbury. Fantastic landlords, they were very good to us, made us feel very welcome, and I think we would have won the league there as well, so I thank Tilbury for everything they did for us. But the place we're going to, Bowers and Pitsy, is a state-of-the-art facility. I can't wait to get in there. The pitch is pretty much brand new. This is a great new feel stadium to match our fresh new club. Well done, thoroughly deserved the win. That's the end of what I think has been a really productive pre-season. We start for real now, we go Wednesday, season starts for real. And I think that what you've done as a squad is give me massive headaches, but big, good headaches to have. We're not gonna get any gimmies. We're not gonna get people go, oh, we don't feel like we're not up to it up for it against them today. We're not going to get any of those. So we've got to make sure that we don't let up at all in anything we do. Yeah, it's, it's been good in terms of preparation, but it's only the very, very beginning of what's going to be a, a, a slog, a slog and a graft for us. But well done, well deserved wins, good. Hawksby and Jacobs on Talk Sport. So right now we're currently in the process of um really launching hashtag united twitch it's going to be me sort of at the forefront and um grinding it out as you can see we've actually got a laptop here which isn't the best uh but we're making steady adjustments um behind me like it's not that nice but um you know we're gonna have a nice little dark ball here with some led lights and stuff like that so fingers crossed it's gonna look better what can i say about lewis preston yes guys what is going on we said it before but i'll say it again I met him on a train. LP, you're not playing, you're on vlog duty, mate. You're playing centre vlog. 
Actually, to think back of the sort of person he is, I think it says a lot to offer a job role to someone that he's met on the train. He has grown with this club. As the club has grown, he has grown. I've watched him blossom into a, a, a massively important employee, a member of the club that, much like many of, of, of our staff members, are more important than any one football player. I don't think I know anyone like Spencer. Ambitious, genuine, cares. I mean, that's the gravestone sorted, isn't it? I just stick that straight on there. LP said this, Twitter bio, lovely. Cheers, Lou. We're about to react to Debs on TalkSport. So he's streaming. I'm playing with him. We're playing full guys. And we're about to react to Debs on TalkSport talking about the FA Cup. So, mental. mental. Manager of uh, the first team, Jay Devereaux, joins us now. Jay, good afternoon. Afternoon, gents. How are you? How does this differ managing this team to be, being involved in coaching at other traditional non league clubs? Just the profile, I think. To, to be honest, in, uh, people l level the accusation of at us, I think, of not being a proper football club. It's different to the traditional in the sense of the, the profile and the, the exposure that the that low level footballers are getting, to be honest. You know, they kind of get a little bit of uh, attention akin to, you know, professionals mm. that makes it very very different for them it's a different kind of uh, pressure and expectation for them to deal with i think imagine if devs just coming at the end and yeah uh, obviously you start to get the hashtag <laughs> what do we know about uh, park view your opponents uh, tonight it's pretty much unknown because with lockdown it's not been possible to get out and see opposition even but a familiar place for us because it's the, where the guys used to Play all their matches. Whole of chapter one, we played at Park View, and I can't, I will never understand how the stars have aligned for us to play our first FA Cup game at where we played all of our chapter one games. It's pretty, like, pretty mental how that's happened. Tonight is massive. There's no getting away from that. This will always be our first ever game in the FA Cup. And you can't get away from the fact it could all be over in a few hours. You know, we've made this massive build-up. If the boys don't deliver, it's cup football. It's probably crueler than any form of cup football ever before because this year there's no extra time and there's no replay. It's literally 90 minutes and done. So it's massive for the club if we get a few wins in this. There's prize money. But I think more than that, every round we progress, we're going to win some people over. We're going to turn some heads and make people realise we're a proper club. And we are, we are a proper club. Yeah, and this year, more than last year, we've got women's teams, we've got girls' teams, we've got boys' teams, we've got a proper infrastructure. Whatever Dev says in his team talk, we are the favourites, we're, we're a league above. So our fans will be expecting us to win, our players will expect to win, I expect us to win, but it doesn't always go like that. So this is the most nervous I've been for a football game, probably ever. Everyone knows about the magic of the FA Cup. Right, the magic of the FA Cup is that anything can happen. Anyone can beat anyone and dreams can come true. And my dreams already came true with this club years and years ago, but for anyone that thinks we can't win this game or the next game or go that one round further, I just tell them to look at what we've already done and say, count us out at your peril. Whether it's off the pitch or on the pitch, it's limitless. And the FA Cup literally allows you to dream in a limitless way. <laughs> we just got some very bad news on WhatsApp. What a game. What a game to start with. Yes! Yes! Some of them have had tests. Big one, obviously, biggest game in our history. 